It's been a couple months now since we re-dug up this whole water tank area, resealed everything and buried it back in the ground, got a water delivery. And the last time I was here, I had thought I was losing water and I think I was, but I did find inside that we had like a nice little overflow in our toilet that the float was a little too high and water was leaching back into the toilet. And that was just a steady stream that you couldn't hear it. So I readjusted the float and I turned off the pump before I left last time. And it's been about three or four weeks since I was down here last. I checked the uh, tank out, water is clear, which is good because we've had a lot of rain down here. And also the water level seems to have stayed right where it's at. It was about four or five inches above the seam of the tank and it's still there right now. So if there was water leaking from the seam, I think it would have at least lowered a little bit during that time, but we're good. Now, when I made the video of digging this tank up and resealing it, there were a lot of questions asked about why things were done a certain way and there were a lot of good suggestions. So I, I wanna cover some of those comments. So while we hop inside where it's a little bit nicer, Maybe the mosquitoes aren't so uh, prevalent inside by the kitchen. Come on. All right, so as I mentioned, when I did the video on uh, digging up the water tank and resealing it, there were a lot of comments in that video and a lot of questions asked. And I thought I would cover some of those today, especially for those of you that are thinking about getting a water system or if you're building in a rural area, that might help you out a little bit. John Evans 6053 asks, I was wondering why you didn't get a one piece plastic tank. He says, I assume that they make ones that are for, for portable water. And yes, they do. They have uh, 2,000 gallon tanks. I think it would have been an option if I would have pushed it at the beginning. There's pros and cons with it, especially out here in this area. It seemed that most of the tank choices in this area are concrete tanks for some reason. And I kind of didn't bat an eye at it. But on the subject of a plastic water tank, I, I actually thought that that would probably be what would be installed here. Then there are some issues with using plastic. And one of them is if your water table is high enough, it could float out of the ground. And that's not really a consideration if you constantly have water in it. But here we were starting out um, with just tank deliveries until we got everything situated. Then we're going to tap into a spring. But there's periods of time where this tank was going to be sitting close to empty or it's only going to be about a quarter full. And if that's the case, having a plastic tank, having this hillside, everything's coming off the hill, the water table rises down here, there was a very real possibility of that tank floating out of the ground and creating other issues. So primarily the reason we went with a concrete tank was just for that issue. Concrete tanks are a little bit cheaper than the plastic tanks and you'd almost think it would be the other way around because of what was involved to deliver this tank. So you had to have a special truck come and haul it here. That truck had to have a little mini crane on it to uh, hold it over the area and then set it into the ground. So you need to create driveway access so this truck can make it and, and take it where it needs to go. And then these tanks come in two halves, but where a plastic tank would be all sealed. So I'm not positive why the plastic tanks are more expensive when you think about having to deliver it, have a special truck, and uh, it's a little time consuming setting a, a concrete one on the ground compared to a plastic one. But that was basically the situation. And, and now today our tank is half full and I'll probably be able to manage here only coming three, four days a month to uh, use the rest of that water up before hunting season starts and then maybe I'll get a tank delivery then. So that tank is gonna sit, you know, maybe a third, quarter, an eighth, and then eventually when we get down close to the bottom, we'll fill it up again. But there'll be long periods of time where that tank is sitting virtually empty and we just didn't want to have the worry of it floating out of the ground. Perry Werner 7567 says a well and a water treatment system would have been cheaper in the overall scheme of things. I, I don't necessarily agree with that personally. I know we looked into a well and we got some prices for that. About the cheapest well just to drill was around thirteen to $17,000, somewhere in that point. There's no guarantee how deep they have to go to uh, find water. And there is the possibility that if they do drill and don't find anything, you still owe them that thirteen dollars to $14,000. The other thing is the water quality of a well around here. Our neighbors, which is probably a quarter mile this way, I've known them for many, many years and I've known that property for many years. I used to hunt on it and stay in their house and their water always had an odor to it. It had a rusty color to it. The original owners never did laundry there. They always took laundry in town to do it because it would stain their sheets. So the water quality wasn't that good. Now you mentioned you could get like a system to help purify that water, but then that's an additional cost too. The better the system, the more it's gonna cost. Plus you have the 
filters and the supplies for the filters, uh, the, either the sediment or the salt. Um, I, I do know there are some better um, filtration systems out there now that are a little bit less maintenance, but they are much more pricier than, than the original type. Kind of think uh, in the grand scheme of things, let's say I did drill a well and then we did want to put a filtration system in here. It's all going to have to be underneath the house most likely. It would take up a lot of room if we put it in uh, where the laundry area is and it just wouldn't look right anywhere else in the house here. So you're talking a good $20,000 plus the maintenance involved with that. So right now the cost of me putting the tank in in a water system and then if we decided to tie into a spring later, we're looking at around $7,000. We already have a small household filter down in the basement. So that takes out the, the larger portions of sediment. Technically, we don't use the water here for drinking. It's mostly for doing the dishes, taking a shower, flushing the toilet, stuff like that. If this turned out to be our permanent residence, then put in a filtration system might be the way to go if we don't want to deal with bringing water in all the time. Bringing water in isn't so bad. I have about 10 empty plastic gallon jugs at home and then I fill those up with filtered water from home. And we use that water when it comes to cooking, making coffee, drinking, brushing your teeth. It's $5,000 one way or $20,000 and no guarantees the other way. A lot of people commented on how they did not see how overfilling that water tank created some of the problems that we had. And I'm still a little skeptical about it, but I can kind of see the reasoning with it. And to refresh your memory, he's from the company and he says that he has seen many times where when you're getting a water delivery and that water is coming in so fast and that water doesn't compress, once it hits the ceiling of that tank, it creates a lot of pressure and it could blow off the riser or loosen up the riser. It could blow out of where the side is where our uh, water line comes out or it could actually temporarily separate the two halves of the tank and when it comes back down, sediment and rocks could get in there and not create a proper seal. I think separating a tank is probably a little bit less likely. I went back and looked at the video of the riser when the tank was first delivered. It did seem like things were well intact on it. It did seem like the concrete was around it. There was a nice seal around it. We added about 18 inches from the top of the concrete of the tank, about 18 inches of riser. And I don't think anything hit it or knocked it. I don't think the dirt being stacked on top of it affected it. But when we removed all that dirt to see if we needed to reseal it again, the, the riser was definitely loose and something loosened it up. And I don't know if it was a water delivery. I don't know if it was a defect in the tank, but we definitely had an issue with it. That was definitely where mud was infiltrating into the water tank and tainting the water, giving us that cloudy, muddy water. As for the side, I just don't know if that was sealed up to begin with just the way um, the pipe and stuff was coming out. So I don't know on that one, but I'm just throwing it out there. A lot of people I'm sure get uh, water deliveries in this area. It's pretty prevalent because some of the wells run dry. Last year, our water delivery guy said that he was running his butt off because, because there's a bit of a drought in the area. And a lot of folks were calling him that haven't called him in three, four years to fill up their water tanks. And that was another issue to consider around here for a well is if it would have run dry or not. Now, I don't think they had a holding tank next door, but there were times where their well would run low or they would uh, not want you to take a shower and let things recoup in there for a little while. So they were always kind of being like water misers when we were there. But uh, if it was just one or two of them, they were fine. But if there was a group of us there, it was a separate Some people issue. mentioned that maybe when the tank was uncovered to put a waterproof, uh, like waterproof in a basement type of membrane all around it. And that thought did occur to me. It also occurred to me when I thought we were losing water, but for now, it seems like everything's okay. It seems like there's nothing going on with the seam. Waterproofing, if I think, would have been the next step if we still had more issues with it. Another comment was made about possibly uh, digging a little trench around it, filling that trench up with some corrugated pipe with holes in it and uh, backfilling that with a little bit of stone to try to keep the, the water from infiltrating the tank, directing it around the tank and then down the rest of the hill. And we also considered that if it was still gonna be a problem too. But the bottom line is we want the tank to be sealed. Now, since we're not down here all the time, it's, I think it's a different scenario. There are probably hundreds of water tanks down here that have leaks in them or uh, are infiltrating a little bit. And most likely the homeowners don't know it because water is constantly being circulated and being used. Where here, this water we got a delivery, it was uh, two months ago, 
and this water is probably going to last us till October. The water has been sitting in that tank for a good six to seven months. And if we have some sort of infiltration, we kind of know it compared to somebody else that's constantly going through a couple thousand gallons every uh, few weeks and bringing in new fresh water either from a well or a spring. Captain Darty asks, is there a warranty involved with this system and installation or are you stuck with the cost? So since I had to scramble and find a, a different excavator, it, it was kind of like a little cluster at the time. Just uh, the, the home was here, it was ready to be set, and the home company started waiting on me now because a lot of these things should have been taken care of already, but our original excavator could not do the job. So when I went around to scramble to find somebody else, you know, the county has a list of numbers that are licensed with our county, so um, you only have so many folks to use. And I ended up starting kind of with the closest people and working my way out on the list. And I ended up finding this gentleman. He came out, looked it over, but he found that um, he did not have the heavy equipment that had to be used to clear out a good portion of the woods to put the leach field in. So that kind of put us in a bind. I had another gentleman come out who looked at it and he had the heavy equipment, but he let his license lapse in this county, so he technically could not do the install. The two knew each other, and the one without the license did all the clearing for me, and the one with the license installed the leach field. My septic system was $9,000. That's what he quoted me, and that's what he charged me. It was an extra thousand from the other excavator to clear out the woods over here. And then it was an extra 4,000 or 5,000. It, it was about 1,500 for the concrete tank, and then the plumber was another 3000 to install the pump, the pressure tank down below, and all that stuff. So altogether, things total up to be around fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars $16,000 for the septic system, the water system, the tank, the pump, and all that stuff. But to try to point the finger at somebody, whether was it the tank company where the problem was, was it the excavator? I don't think so. From what I could tell, he didn't do anything wrong. Did the plumber do something wrong? I kind of didn't care for the way the wires were coming out of the side where it was sealed and that definitely was a leak there but to try to come back and point fingers it, it wasn't an easy thing to do there wasn't something obvious you know if there was an obvious defect when the tank when it was delivered that could have been taken care of right then and there but it seemed okay uh, did it happen when it was being overfilled so maybe it's something on my end I wasn't aware of something like that happening when it overfilled you know it could have happened there it's very hard to be able to point the finger and say hey this is your fault I want you to take care of it and I want you to fix it the excavator was nice enough to come out we agreed he would dig everything up and then I had him do a few extra things down here and I think uh, I paid him like 500 bucks to Helped me clear out a few other things in addition to uh, getting that tank cleared and resealed. We, we did it on a Friday and a Saturday to try not to interfere with his normal workload. And right now, everything appears to be okay. So technically, no, not, a, not under warranty. I guess if the, something were to actually be a large defect with the tank, well, then I could come back to the tank people. If with the pump were to break, well, then maybe it's the pump manufacturer. If uh, the excavator had knocked a, a large crack in it with his bucket or his, his backhoe, well, then, yeah, you could easily point the finger at that. So, no, there technically wasn't really a warranty on this type of issue to be able to point the finger at and say, hey, you need to fix this. All right, so that's an update with the water tank. I need to go outside and do a few chores. I got to get some grass cut. A couple guys are coming down here. We're thinking about trying to start building some hunting blinds with the wood that we pilfered from the old cabin when we tore it down. So we're going to start that process. I don't think we're going to get one fully assembled today, but I think we'll get most of the walls built and probably have something ready to go by early September, late August. Well, that's going to do it for this week. Next week, we'll be back in northern Ohio. I have a few more chores to do up here. So I appreciate everybody watching. Hope you enjoy and subscribe to these videos. Click on that little bell when you want to know when a new one is coming out. And uh, keep an eye on us. Take care, everybody.